Hi, uh, welcome to Ray Summit. This is Carson Wang from Intel. Today, I'm very excited to introduce Ray DP, and I will talk about how to build a large scale end to end data analytics and AI pipeline using Spark and Ray. This is today's agenda. I will first talk about some background of the big data and AI, how people are trying to integrate big data and AI, and what are the challenges uh, we are facing. Then I will introduce Ray and the Ray DP project, and how we can uh, build end-to-end -end pipeline much easily and efficiently with these projects. Then I will also introduce uh, a little more about the Ray DP API and the architecture design. Finally, I will also show you some examples uh, about the using Ray DP to build some pipelines like uh, Spark with XGBoost and Spark with Holovat on Ray. So let's get started with some uh, uh, big data and AI background. As we know, big data and AI have been two different communities. Uh, on one side, Apache Spark is one of the leading big data framework and it has been evolving quickly in the past few years. On the other side, there are also more and more um, machine learning and deep learning frameworks are being very popular, like TensorFlow, PyTorch. And there are also more and more intersections between these two communities. One of the reasons is because massive data is uh, very critical for better AI. Uh, to get a, a better uh, AI model, uh, we actually need a very uh, large number of high quality data. Um, and uh, with more and more data being used for training, it's also becoming clear that a single node will not meet the computing requirement of the training. So distributed training will be a uh, norm. We have seen many projects uh, that tries to uh, uh, integrate these uh, communities like Holovard on Spark, uh, TensorFlow on Spark. These projects uh, run the deep learning frameworks on, on Spark. And there are also other projects like Petastorm that store the Spark output into a file format that can be read by the deep learning frameworks. So next, let's take a look at some common setup for uh, integrating big data with AI. A traditional approach is to use uh, two clusters, one for uh, Spark and another one for machine learning and deep learning. So in this setup, if you have an energy and uh, uh, data analytics and AI pipeline, you first need to write a Spark program, submit that to the Spark cluster to do data preprocessing. And then you store the output into a distributed file system like HDFS. And in the next step for model training, if your uh, machine learning framework support reading directly from uh, HDFS, you can do that. Otherwise, you also need to copy the data from the Spark cluster to the machine learning and deep learning cluster and load the data from its own storage. So uh, there are a few challenges here. Uh, firstly, there are data movements between clusters. And secondly, there are also overhead of managing uh, two clusters. And if we look at the end-to-end -end pipeline, uh, we will see we will need a glue code to stitch together multiple programs. So it will be a segmented application. Um, the second approach is to run machine learning and deep learning frameworks on Spark. So this is useful if you have a existing Spark cluster and you want to utilize the resource in the cluster to do machine learning and deep learning. Uh, so there are a few uh, frameworks supported on Spark. And uh, uh, by using these uh, frameworks, you can uh, implement a Spark program and do both data preprocessing and model training in, the, in uh, a single Spark cluster. Uh, however, there are also a few challenges here. Uh, this solution, uh, first, it is very specific to Spark, and it requires the machine learning and deep learning frameworks supported on Spark. So if you have a pipeline that involves a framework but not supported on Spark, 
or if you do not have Spark involved in the pipeline, uh, this will uh, not work for you. Uh, secondly, when we do data exchange between Spark and other uh, frameworks, usually it relies on distributed file system like HDFS. So this will also add latency in your uh, entire pipeline. Today, there are also uh, many org uh, organizations moving to a single cluster managed by Kubernetes. And by using a workflow orchestration framework like uh, Kubeflow, it's also possible to build the end-to-end uh, -end pipeline on a single cluster managed by Kubernetes. So we can run Spark on Kubernetes, and we can also run the uh, model training part on Kubernetes. Uh, in this uh, setup, uh, uh, there are also a few challenges here. Uh, so first, you to build the entire pipeline, you probably you need to uh, it need to be written in multiple programs and configuration files. So for every step, you uh, need to probably need to uh, write the Docker file, build the image, and write the Spark program or the model training program and construct the pipeline. So this is not as simple as uh, write the entire program in a single Python program. And secondly, when we do data exchange between uh, these uh, frameworks, usually it also needed to rely on a distributed file system like HDFS. So this, which will uh, also add a latency in the uh, pipeline. So the question is, can we have a, a general purpose framework that can be used as a single substrate for both data preprocessing and model training and even uh, model serving? And uh, uh, we also want to make sure we can develop the entire pipeline yeah, easily and efficiently. For example, just uh, uh, write the entire pipeline in a single Python program. And instead of using a, a distributed file system to do data exchange, uh, can we also use the in-memory uh, store to do efficient data exchange? So the answer is to use Ray uh, and also use the RayDP project to run uh, Spark on Ray. So as we know, Ray is a general purpose uh, framework that provides simple and universal API to build distributed uh, applications. So Ray Core provides some simple APIs like Task and Actor, but they are powerful enough to build distributed libraries and applications. Today, there are a few built-in libraries in Ray, like Ray Tune, RLLib, Ray GD, and Ray Serve. And there are also more and more third-party libraries being supported on Ray, like SGBoost, Holovat. And uh, for data preprocessing, today there are a few options on Ray, uh, like Modin, uh, Dask, uh, and Mars. Uh, however, uh, we noticed there are also a few use cases that are using Spark as a major data preprocessing uh, framework in their pipeline. So we created the RayDP project uh, to provide simple APIs for running Spark on Ray and also integrating Spark with distributed machine learning and uh, deep learning frameworks. When we run Spark on Ray, we treat Ray as a resource manager of Spark and we run all the Spark process in Ray's uh, actors. So this makes Spark just like a native library on Ray. And to integrate Spark with distributed machine learning and deep learning frameworks, we provide two approaches. The first one is, the simplest one is to use a PyTorch and a TensorFlow estimator. So you can simply create a, a estimator by passing in your model, your optimizer, your loss function, and a few other configurations. And then you can directly fit that with your Spark data frame. And we will take care of everything else, uh, like do the data exchange from Spark to uh, the deep learning framework and uh, scale out your training on a Ray cluster. However, if you prefer to use the uh, framework or library API directly, we also provide a, another approach, which is the Ray ML dataset converter. Uh, it can allow you to uh, convert a Spark data frame to a Ray ML dataset. And the array ML data can be actually consumed by a few uh, libraries uh, available on Ray, like HGBoost, Holovard, Ray SGD. So uh, by using this way, we can also connect Spark with this uh, machine learning and deep learning frameworks. 
So uh, with Ray as a single substrate and with Ray DP to run Spark on Ray, now uh, together with a few other uh, projects and frameworks available on Ray, uh, it becomes very uh, straightforward to build an end-to-end pipeline on top of Ray. And we can easily implement the entire pipeline in a uh, integrated uh, Python program. So in a typical workflow, now we can use RayDP to run Spark on Ray, and we can use SparkSQL to uh, read the data and uh, do data preprocessing using the SparkSQL or DataFrame API. We can also use SparkMLLib to do uh, feature engineering. After that, we can store the output into Ray's uh, in-memory object store uh, to efficiently exchange the data between uh, Spark and other frameworks. In the next step for model training, we can use any frameworks uh, uh, available on Ray, like PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow, Holobard, Ray CD, XGBoost, uh, and even Spark ML Lab. Uh, it's also uh, straightforward to integrate the model training with Ray Tune to do hyperparameter tuning. So after that, we get a model. Uh, we can also use Ray Serve to do a uh, model serving. So everything will run on a single platform Ray, and, and we can build this uh, uh, easily in a uh, Python program. It's also very easy to scale your Ray program from your laptop to cloud or Kubernetes. Uh, we usually start our development on our local laptop. And we start with a small data set. We can implement our Python program using all the available APIs like Array, RayDP, and PySpark, and the deep learning uh, framework APIs. Uh, once it's ready and it works well on our, uh, our local laptop, now we can use Ray Cluster Launcher to start a Ray cluster in the cloud or on a Kubernetes cluster. Ray support auto scaling, so we can start with a small number of instances and scale out uh, when the program requires more resource. So if you are running uh, Spark uh, on Ray and uh, uh, you want to scale out to the cloud, now you don't even need to set up a Spark cluster in the cloud. Just use the Ray cluster launcher to start the Ray, uh, Ray cluster. And now you can easily scale your uh, Spark program uh, or an end-to-end -end program from your laptop to the cloud uh, seamlessly and efficiently. Uh, here are a few uh, benefits of uh, using RayDP and Ray. So first, you will get uh, increased productivity. It simplifies how you can build and manage energy in the pipeline. Uh, instead of uh, write multiple programs and use uh, some glue codes or a workflow orchestration framework to stitch them together, now you can implement the entire pipeline in a, a single Python program. You can use uh, any APIs available on Ray, like Spark, HBoost, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and Holobot, and more. Secondly, you will also get better performance. So instead of using a distributed file system to uh, do the data exchange, now it's also possible to do uh, in-memory data exchange by using Ray's uh, object store. And we also plan to integrate a few uh, Spark optimizations in RayDP. So, for example, we can also use Ray's uh, in-memory uh, object store to do Spark Shuffle. So when you run Spark uh, on Ray, you will directly get uh, the benefit of that. Finally, you will also get uh, increased resource utilization. Uh, Ray itself supports auto-scaling at the cluster level, and the Spark also supports uh, dynamic resource allocation. Uh, so by combining these two, it's actually uh, possible you will get a very, very good resource utilization and save the cost. Next, let's take a close look at the RayDP API uh, and the architecture design. First, let's take a look at the uh, Spark on Ray API, so how you can start a Spark job on Ray. Uh, so in your Python program, you First, you need to connect to a Ray cluster using Ray.init. And then now you can use the RayDP API init Spark to start a Spark job on a Ray cluster. You can specify your application name, uh, the number of the 
Spark executors you want to launch, and also the resource for every Spark executor, like the, the number of the cores and the memory size. You can also uh, pass in additional Spark configurations in this API. After that, we will launch the Spark job on, on Ray cluster, and uh, you will get a Spark session. So now you can use any Spark APIs uh, to do, uh, for example, read the uh, packet file and uh, do some uh, data frame operations. After you finish your Spark uh, processing, you can call the readyp.stop Spark to stop the job and also release the resource. This picture illustrates how we uh, implement Spark on Ray. As I mentioned earlier, we treat Ray as a resource manager of Spark. Uh, so uh, when your uh, Python program called the init Spark API, uh, we first we will uh, launch a app master and it, we will run that in a Ray Java actor. And uh, uh, the Spark driver also will send the request to the app master, for example, how many Spark executors you want to launch and what are the resources for each Spark executor. So the app master is responsible for uh, starting all the Spark executors in the Ray cluster. So in the second step, it will uh, launch these uh, uh, executors in Ray's Java actors. And then uh, in the third step, these executors will uh, register to the Spark driver. So after that, they can uh, just communicate with each other using Spark's own communication protocol. Because we start all the Spark executors in a Ray Java actor, so we can easily access the Ray uh, object store and do efficient data exchange between uh, Spark and the other Ray libraries. Next, let's take a look at the uh, estimator uh, API. Uh, yeah, so to do distributed training uh, on Ray and on a uh, Spark data frame, uh, the, easiest, the simplest one uh, approach is to use the PyTorch and TensorFlow estimator provided by uh, RayDP. So you can create a PyTorch estimator uh, by specifying how many uh, training workers you want to run, and what is your model, the optimizer, and the loss function. Uh, additionally, you can specify the feature columns, the label column, uh, the batch size and also the number of the epochs. So after that, you can directly fit that uh, using a Spark data frame. So and we will take care of everything else uh, and uh, scale your your distributed uh, training on, on the Ray cluster. Uh, as I mentioned, the second approach to, to do uh, distributed training on the Spark data frame is to use the Ray ML dataset converter. So if you prefer to use the, uh, for example, the Ray CD or Holobot API directly, now you can use this converter to convert a Spark data frame uh, to a Ray ML dataset. The Ray ML dataset is a distributed machine learning dataset uh, on, on Ray, and the data will be stored in Ray's uh, object store. So we, we provide the API to create that from a Spark data frame. And the uh, Ray ML dataset also provides APIs to uh, transform your uh, dataset. So you can use a user-defined function to transform every data shard in the Ray ML dataset. And the Ray ML dataset also provides APIs to convert your uh, dataset to a PyTorch or TensorFlow dataset. So uh, after that, the data can be easily loaded by uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow. Uh, during the planning and execution uh, phase, uh, uh, for the uh, this example in this page, now it will uh, be divided into two uh, phases. The first one is to uh, store the Spark data frame into the Ray uh, object store and create that uh, Ray ML dataset. And for every data shard, uh, there will be a, a Ray actor to manage that data uh, data shard. And uh, for every uh, transformation and uh, conversion to PyTorch or TensorFlow, they, they can actually be executed in pipeline. So in this case, if we want to do uh, the distributed PyTorch training, uh, the second step, uh, every PyTorch actor will directly 
get the data from race object store and do the data transformation and converting to a PyTorch dataset. So that can be uh, used as a uh, for the distributed chaining. Uh, next, let's take a look at uh, some RDP examples uh, how we can build end-to-end uh, -end pipelines using uh, Spark and other uh, machine learning and deep learning frameworks. The first example is to run Spark and the uh, HBoost array. So this will be a uh, integrated uh, Python program. And uh, there are two parts here. One is the data preprocessing part, and another one will be the model training part. So uh, in your Python program, for data preprocessing, uh, we can uh, first connect to a Ray cluster using Ray.init. And then we just use the RayDP API to uh, start a Spark job here. After that, we can uh, use any Spark API to, uh, for example, read the CSV file and uh, use the Spark Data Frame API to do uh, data preprocessing here. Uh, finally, we can split our data set into a train and a test data frame. And uh, we can also convert the Spark Data Frame to a Ray ML data set here. In the model training part, we can uh, just follow the SGBoost on Ray uh, API and, and uh, uh, in, for HBoost on Ray, it uses the Ray D matrix as a basic data uh, type for the training. And luckily, it also it support creating uh, a Ray D matrix from a Ray ML dataset. So we can easily create that uh, by uh, using the Ray ML dataset we created uh, in the data preprocessing part. After that, we can uh, just use the HBoost on Ray uh, the train function to do distributed XGBoost uh, training on Ray. So this is uh, the example how we can uh, integrate Spark and XGBoost uh, and connect them uh, uh, using the Ray ML dataset and do the tr distributed training on Ray. Uh, the second example is to run Spark and Holobot on Ray. So similarly, this will be a, a integrated Python program. And in the data preprocessing, Part, it will be uh, very similar. You connect to a Ray cluster and start a Spark job on Ray, and then read the data and uh, do uh, data preprocessing using Spark API. And finally, you can create a, a Ray ML dataset, and also uh, you convert that to a PyTorch uh, dataset. And in the model training part, uh, now you uh, define your PyTorch model, and then you can follow the Holobot on Ray uh, document to, to do the distributed Holobot training on Ray. So in this case, we need to define a train function. And this train function will be executed by, by uh, uh, every training worker. So it has the information about the rank ID. Uh, and uh, by using this rank ID, we can get the data shard from the uh, PyTorch dataset. So every training worker will actually get one data shard uh, for, for that, for that training worker so that they can, uh, uh, work together to do that distributed training. And this data set is actually the, uh, the PyTorch data set we created from the data preprocessing part. So this is the example how we can connect Spark with, uh, Holobot and do the data exchange using uh, array ML data set. The next example is to uh, run Spark and Holobot and also integrate them with RayTune uh, to do uh, hyperparameter tuning on Ray. So uh, the data preprocessing part will be the same, but in the model training and the tuning pattern, uh, it's also straightforward to integrate with RayTune to do uh, the hyperparameter tuning. So we can just uh, follow the RayTune uh, API, and in this case, we can uh, search the the epoch and the learning rate and to get the better configuration for this uh, model training. Finally, let's give a brief summary. So we first uh, discussed some background of big data and AI and how people are integrating them and what are the common challenges in 
different setups. And then we introduce Ray, uh, which is a general purpose framework and that can be used as a single substrate for end-to-end -end data analytics and AI pipelines. Then we in also introduce RayDP, which provides simple APIs for running Spark on, on Ray and also integrating Spark with distributed machine learning and deep learning frameworks. To get more information, please uh, visit our GitHub uh, uh, repo uh, and we also welcome any feedback on this. Thank you very much.